Right then, morning, welcome back. 2013, Happy New Year. Unbelievable. It sounds so futuristic, doesn't it? 2013, crazy. I remember sitting in like a school lesson um, at school, funny enough, in like 1991 and um, and just thinking to myself, well, imagine the year 2000, it seems so far away. And here we are, 2013. It's crazy. In fact, I've got a little story here, a very little brief story. Speaking of being at school, I remember when I started senior school, secondary school, or high school, as a lot of kids call it these days in the UK. What the hell's all that about? Didn't call it high school when I was a kid. If you called it high school, you were American. Americans call it high school. But I guess in this day and age, you know, a new generation of kids, uh, by all accounts, the new generation call senior school high school. I don't know, fair enough. Gotta go with the times, haven't you? But I guess I'm a little bit of a grumpy old man in that sense. It's not high school for me. It's senior school or secondary school. But I do digress. When I started secondary school, high school and whatever, it was the summer of 1990. And I remember we were all, you know, either 12 or 13 years of age, depending on what month your birthday falls. And we were sitting there in the main hall. And the teacher, I think the deputy head teacher at the time, she was called Mrs. Bevan. A bit of a fact for you there. And not that it matters. And I've got some stories about her, actually. <laughs> Maybe legally I shouldn't mention them, but, you know, I might do one day. Uh, but yeah, we were sitting there, very first day of secondary school, summer of 1990. I guess it would have been, what, September time? That's when the new term starts. And we were all sitting there the whole year. The whole year had started. It was our first day. And she sat us down and we had this big kind of like projection screen, you know, which was, showed a load of things on there. I guess the, the um, not the rules are such about the school, but the kind of the... Uh, the morals of the school, the, the code of conduct, all that kind of stuff. Talking about the uniforms, talking about what you should do, what you can't do, all that kind of stuff. And one thing has always stuck with me, and I remember it as if it was yesterday, and she turned around to us all and she said, right, you're sitting there now in your little suits, uh, well, our, you know, our blazers and our ties and all that kind of stuff, and you're here for four years at least, or maybe a fifth if you went on to sixth form, which I didn't, but anyway. Uh, she said, you're sitting here now, and you're thinking, it's 1990, uh, four years seems ages away. She said, but trust me, those four years will fly by. You will not believe how quickly those four years will go by. And I remember it like it was yesterday, just sitting there, kind of thinking, you're joking, aren't you? Four years, it's going to drag by. It's never going to go in. And that was 1990. And now it's 2013. Those four years really did fly in. They were always ever going to fly in, you know, obviously, because time does go in quickly. But it just seems amazing how how quickly that four years, not just four years, but those 23 years have gone in since then. It is mental. So yeah, anyway, like I say, Happy New Year, 2013. And it's that time of the year, you know, when everyone does their New Year's resolutions. I'm still debating whether to do a New Year's resolutions video. Maybe I should, in the sense that... You know, I've done one actually for, I mean, if I do one, it'll be my fourth on YouTube, fourth year. I was really surprised. I was looking back through my vids the other day and I thought, have I done a couple? And uh, I'd done three. And, and if I do another for this year, it'll be four. Couldn't believe it. But then I, I, you know, watched a couple back, not in their entirety, just like a couple of minutes. And it was quickly evident to me that what I was saying that I wanted to do in all of these videos, I didn't actually end up doing. So I thought, what's the bloody point? <laughs> you know, what's the point doing a... Uh, a New Year's resolutions vid, but I'm just not gonna stick to it, blatantly not gonna stick to it. But then I might, because to be fair, you know, the older I get, and you know, not that I'm ancient or anything, but the, the older I get, the more I do tend to stick to what I say. I am definitely getting better, without question. But, you know, now and again, I do come out with some silly claims of, you know, going for full sets and full collections and all that kind of nonsense. And whilst the idea of going for full sets on a couple of uh, systems, a couple of systems, you know, definitely does appeal, I do kind of have a think about it and wonder whether it's worth it, whether I do really want to do it. And I guess if you're having doubts, even the slightest doubt, then, you know, what's the point? I'll tell you what, though, one of the things I can definitely rule out is going for an Atari Jaguar full collection. <laughs> I don't know what in the name of hell I was thinking when I said that. Now, maybe you're watching this and you're thinking, or listening to it, of course, and thinking, oh, Atari Jaguar was a great bit of kit. Lovely. I love it. Love it like a brother. Maybe you do. Um, and if you do, then, you know, power to your elbow. But I don't think it's a particularly good system. I did like Atari, uh, Atari um, what was it called? 
Aliens vs Predator. I thought that was very good. You know, technically, I thought it looked amazing, really, on the Jaguar, and I did enjoy playing it. But really, the Atari Jaguar, it holds a little bit of nostalgia in the sense that I remember being at college at the time and seeing it in a, a local computer game store that me and my friends would frequent on a regular basis. Uh, usually frequent it, you know, rather than go into actual lessons. <laughs> and one of the things they were selling at the time, because this would have been like 95, uh, was the Atari Jaguar. And I've got really vivid images of seeing that in there and looking at it and thinking, yeah, it does look pretty good. Uh, same with the Amiga CD32, which had only just come out, I think, a few months before. And so, yeah, I've kind of got nostalgia for those two systems in that sense, but I don't want to get them. And, you know, I did have an Atari Jaguar. I've had a couple over the years, but it's just definitely a system I don't want to get involved in now. Um, although, never say never, I guess, just in case. You know, I might buy one really cheap, I might get an opportunity to be given one for free, in which case, well, you know, I might take it. But I, I, I'm really getting to that stage now where I don't want to be wasting time and money on things that don't really interest me. And the older I get, actually what I want to do is kind of buy back a lot of the stuff I used to have as a kid. You know, and anything which I missed out on as a kid, it's a case of, well, I'm not really bothered about getting now. Such as like the, the NES, you know, Nintendo Entertainment System. Never had one as a kid. I knew about two people who did have one. And same with the Master System. It's something which I played on a couple of times at a, a friend's house. Um, a mate of mine called Damien at the time, who uh, used to have one. I think he had like Alex Kidd and maybe the Sonic and a couple of other stuff. And I thought it was all right, but I didn't really bother with it. And the reason I didn't bother with it is because I had an Amstrad and you know, all my friends pretty much had a Commodore 64 and a Spectrum. You know, the three big rivals back in the day, you know, of the 8-bit era. And to me, and it's just a personal opinion, I guess, um, although it's, it's, you could say, somewhat backed up um, through sales and through popularity. But to me, you know, 8-bit consoles, the NES and the Master System, were completely and utterly inferior to the Spectrum, the Commodore 64 and the Amstrad. Just uh, not necessarily in terms of graphics or sound or any of that, but in terms of, you know, when it came to games and availability and prices. You know, you could pick up a Spectrum game or Commodore 64 or Amstrad for like a quid. Or two quid, whereas you know you were paying like what thirty quid for a Master System or a NES game. So I never really got into it because of I guess price reasons. But they are decent bits of kit, and I do see a lot of people obviously picking up the net, uh, the NES and the Master System on YouTube. But uh, I decided a long time ago that I'm just not going to bother with them, and that's not having a go at anybody who collects for it because obviously you collect it because you like it, and that's great, you know. But for anyone out there who's thinking, and I'm not suggesting anyone's like this for one minute, but if you are considering picking up um, any system for that matter, just because you see other people on YouTube doing it, um, then have a think about it. You know, because you'll quickly realise, I think, in my experiences anyway, that if you start to spend a lot of money on stuff that you're not really bothered about, you know, that your heart's not really in, um, because maybe your nostalgia's not there for it, then you will get bored of it very quickly. Anyway, what am I playing, you're asking? That looks really good. What is it, Alex? I'll tell you what it is. It's Hard Corps Uprising, made by Konami, or Konami, as some people call it. Maybe that's right. I have grew up calling it Konami, and that's how it's always going to be, uh, through sheer stubbornness, if I am wrong. But I don't think I am. But anyway, yeah, it's um, it came out a couple of years ago, or nearly a couple of years ago, I think. It's available as a digital download, so not a lot of people may be you know, into it as a result of you know, no physical copy being available. But it just looked really interesting. I, I saw it by chance and I thought, well, let's give it a give it a try, take a punt on it, why not? I think it was only around about five or six dollars. So yeah, it's available for the Xbox and the PlayStation 3. I've got the Xbox version and it's, as you can see, uh, just a, a side scroller uh, shoot em up, which, which is great. And this is one of the things I do love about modern games. You know, something like this only costs around about six, seven dollars, give or take. And it's a cross between a modern game, in the sense that the graphics look really polished and nice and the music's good. Well, I don't really like that kind of style of music, you know, but it, it sounds good and, and all the rest of it. Um, but it retains that kind of old 2D 16-bit side-scrolling element, which I'm a massive fan of, you know, from the SNES and the Mega Drive days. So it's a perfect combination, really. You know, you get to play a modern game with good-looking graphics, but like I say, it has that old-style feel to it as well. So I do thoroughly recommend it, although I am absolutely rubbish at it, as you can see. I think this is my first goal for the best part of a year, 
I did have another go after this with a second character, I think one of the female characters in the game, and I did a lot better because I kind of knew what I was doing. But I thought, well, let's just put this one up. You know, why not? So, yeah, I do rubbish on it, but, you know, who cares? So, I've been wondering what to do when it comes to these vlogs. Now, obviously, this is the second one that I've done, and clearly the second one that I've also done with gameplay going on in the background. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think it works. Uh, maybe not works for me right now, because, you know, it's still a little bit raw, because I'm not really sure what to talk about, and I'm not really sure if it's flowing right. But, you know, as the weeks and the months go by, clearly it will, in theory. Um, you know, no, it will get better. But for now, it's, it still feels very rough around the edges. But what I'm thinking of doing, every now and again maybe, or maybe even make it a permanent thing, I don't know, is to be in front of the camera. I guess, you know, the traditional way of doing a vlog. And, or what I could do, I could take the Sony bloggy camera, I could take it outside, and I could film some stuff, you know, some footage, and uh, what I may have to do, though, if I do that, is to um, talk over the top of it when I come back, because I'm not sure that the sound is going to be picked up particularly well. But again, it's all about variety, you know, mixing things up, trying something different. And I've done this before, or tried to do it when it comes to CD pickups. You know, I implemented that or introduced it last year. It only lasted around about four or five months. Because, uh, not because I got bored with it, I just forgot about it. You know, one month went by without me doing a CD pickup, and then that quickly turned into two months to three months to four months. And I turned round to myself kind of like in October, and I was like, oh god, I completely forgot about that. So I do keep meaning to do that, and I will get back to buying CDs, because I love music. It's a massive part of my life. You know, I, I play the guitar um, in real life, and I, you know, I, music's brilliant. Everybody likes music, surely to god. So I'm definitely going to bring that back. Yes, it may not be for everyone who's, you know, um, my average subscriber, because that's usually, obviously, a gamer. But I think if you mix your channel up a little bit, I think that can only be a good thing. I mean, I'll be honest with you, for a couple of years now, I keep meaning to try and, you know, introduce, like, a football vlog. Just maybe once a month, so it's not for everyone, and I wouldn't be offended if my average subscriber didn't watch it, because it is, you know, for football fans. But I was thinking of doing that, talking about what's going on and all the rest of it. Maybe even do it with another person on YouTube. I've thought about it in the past, you know, to bounce back. Um, you know, ideas and a bit of banter. Maybe make it a bit like a fantasy football league, if anyone remembers that from, you know, from the... Um, when did it start? Kind of early 90s with Badil and Skinner on it. You know, maybe doing something like that. That's kind of always appealed to me. But it's setting it up. It's how would we do it? Would it be Skype? Would it be... It just seems so hard work. And then I love the idea of doing, like, multiplayer videos, you know, online with, with fellow YouTubers. And maybe doing a dual commentary. Or maybe just not doing a dual commentary. Just recording it and putting it on and giving my take of it. So I've got a lot of ideas, but I guess it's just finding the time, you know, with working and just average, you know, everyday life kind of... Um, not getting in the way as such, but, you know, doing other stuff. Because life, real life, has got to come first. Of course it has. But anyway, that's for another day. I'll have a think about what I want to do. And um, hopefully as the months and the years go by, my channel can be mixed up a little bit. But of course, it's still going to remain predominantly a gaming channel. So anyway, that's about it for now. What I'm going to do in a second, I'm going to download the second episode of Elementary. Because I really liked the first one. I thought it was really good. Now, I know it's got you know a bit of a mixed, lukewarm reception, perhaps. Some people really liked it. Others thought it was a bit rubbish. But yeah, I quite like it, so that is that. I've also got to download the rest of Downton Abbey. We're on season three of that one. I think it's brilliant, but, you know, maybe not for everyone. Uh, Only Fools and Horses, we're on, I think, season five of that one. An Idiot Abroad, season three. An Idiot Abroad, yeah, with Carl Pilkerton. It's really predictable, but I do still find it funny, and I always laugh. So, um, it's essential viewing in my book. But anyway, that's that. Vlog two, done and dusted. As I said before, the structure, the formula, the format, it will change from time to time. But there's no harm whatsoever in trying new things and being a little bit different. Yes, not everybody's going to watch everything you do. Um, we should never be you know, offended if somebody doesn't watch all our videos. Because we haven't always got the time. But um, that's that. So, all I'm going to say, happy 2013. Really make it a good one. Positive thinking. Uh, anything which went wrong last year, put it right this year. See you later.